Up next, we have a presentation from Professor Massimiliano Filasto on augmentative and alternative communication in the ASLA model for evaluating and providing devices in Italy. And this is also a pre-recorded presentation. Uh, good morning and thank you for the opportunity to explain the ISLA model for evaluating and providing uh, communication devices in uh, Italy. Of course, uh, uh, communicating is an essential need for all the people and uh, through communication everyone expresses himself and uh, enters into relationships with others. This is uh, well known to everybody, is the Charter of Communication Rights from the Joint Committee for the Communication Needs of Persons with Severe Disabilities in 1992. And uh, uh, the most important thing in this chapter is uh, the disassertion. Every person, regardless of the degree of their disability, has the basic right to influence the conditions of their existence through communications. So every person has the right to uh, request desired objects, actions, situations and persons. Every person has the right to uh, have opportunities and contexts that provide and encourage um, to participate as full communicative partners in the relational exchanges with other individuals and every person has the right to receive significant and culturally and linguistically appropriate messages. Of course, uh, people with AALS have uh, a motor speech disorders, but uh, the, the speech problem, the communication problem in these patients is not uh, only related to motor speech to specific motor speech disorders, because uh, a global loss of communication can be related to um, several different issues. Weakness of upper limbs, for example, respiratory failure with the necessity of mechanical ventilation support, and uh, in the last phases of disease, locked in syndrome. So, in managing ALS patients, uh, uh, it's very important, it's critical to provide uh, appropriate devices for AAC because uh, alternative communication may improve quality of life, may assist with decision making and may avoid social isolation of our patients. As we know, different AAC devices exist, do exist. There are no tech devices, a type of AAC uh, where an individual uses no materials other than their body to communicate. There are low-tech devices. Uh, low-tech devices uh, do not require a battery, for example, a picture exchange communication system, for example, symbol charts or communication boards and books. Uh, there are, of course, high-tech devices. They are electronic devices that permit the storage and the retrieval of messages and uh, many of these high-tech electronic devices uh, allow the use of speech output. The most famous um, maybe is the next generation side tracking speech generating device. So some example of AEAC devices, the communication table. Uh, our communication table is a low-tech paper device. It can be alphabetical. In these cases, uh, it uh, allows the person to have a conversation with other people or symbolic in order to facilitate the expression of needs uh, like the needs connected with daily care, with the, the problem of, uh, of uh, daily, daily life. And uh, of course, there are dynamic communicators, touchscreen, scanning devices, mouse emulator, aid tracking devices and uh, voice amplifiers. ISLA is uh, the Italian national reference entity for the protection, care and treatment of uh, AELS patients. And ISLA identify uh, as uh, one of the primary need, needs of people with AELS, the need of a correct communication with, with other people. And is uh, for the reason ISLA um, produce a pathway in order to identify and acquire the correct AEAC system for people suffering from AELS. 
And um, in these uh, slides, uh, you can see the, the, the pathway, an overview of this pathway. And the first point is uh, reporting of the person with communication needs. Usually, this report uh, comes from family member, from the patients, of course, but more often from family member, caregiver, health professional. Um, after reporting the need, the need of communication, the patients uh, should be referred to specialist doctor, doctor specialist in ALS care, ALS caring, or uh, at the reference center. But in some, in some place in, in Italy, in some small village in Italy, there are no uh, reference centers near the the uh, place where the, 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 the patients live is living. In that case, ESLA can be involved, can, sorry, can involve in this process the territorial service from the uh, National Health Service or support uh, counseling by the ISLA territorial agencies or by uh, some uh, teleconsultation. The second step after reporting the communication needs, second, second step is uh, assessment of the needs, needs assessments. Uh, should be done in a reference centers or if no reference centers is present uh, with the involvement of uh, health na national health system and the territorial uh, service of national health system or by teleconsultation. The next step is device testing. Um, we usually use uh, some specific uh, forms and I will show you these uh, forms lead. And after the device testing, the prescription, the provision, and the monitoring, the, the, the test is the, the, next, the next steps in this path. This is the evaluation sheet for uh, A, AC communication for, for the needs, for assessment the needs of that, that specific patient. You can um, see that in the patients we collect uh, many, many important information uh, about the um, needs of the patients, uh, needs of communication, about the uh, characteristics of the um, communication problem, about the clinical uh, picture. We have a clinical section about clinical description. Uh, in these patients, we collect information uh, uh, in this section, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. we collect the, the information about uh, the motor functions, about the respiratory functions, about ocular motion, uh, uh, possible other different ocular um, pathologies, and many other information that is useful to uh, better, better understand which is the most useful uh, device for that specific patient. The mm, next step is the mm, device testing. We use uh, uh, two different uh, different forms for assess, assessing the, 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 the device, device for, for testing the device. The first one is the communication devices test sheet. It's a, it's a sheet that uh, should be filled uh, by the technician who oversees testing the device and summarizes the evaluation and the communicative solution proposal uh, that has been identified, identified for, for that specific patient. The second, the second form is a, a, a proper form specific for eye control device. This is to be completed by the person testing the device. It requires the person with a disability to evaluate the device based on the perception acquired during the test. The form is filled, filled out with the help of the technician and we obtain a score. And by this score, it's possible to understand the preference of the, of, of the person with respect to the tested communicators and uh, this score may support the correct prescription. This is the communication device test sheet. Also in this case we collect many different information about uh, respiratory function, uh, about uh, clinical function, uh, about the, the obviously the communication needs and uh, many many other many other many other uh, information useful to to uh, find to find the, the correct device for that specific and this is the uh, proper form specific for eye control device 
Uh, this is a form um, with a score uh, for each of the items examined. Uh, the patients uh, can put uh, a score between uh, one and five. When one is uh, not at all satisfied and five is very, very satisfied. Testing AEAC can be performed both at the patient's home or in the nursing setting, but uh, it, it's very important that it must be done within 30 days of receipt of the evaluation form. This step is a, is a, a prerequisite to verify the uh, effectiveness of human-machine interaction. In the case of uh, eye-controlled communicators, we believe it is important uh, to test three different devices different by brand and model. And uh, it is necessary to have different devices by user's mode, have head, mouse emulator and eye tracker, for example, available for testing in the specific patients. The next step is prescribing the aid. The prescription of device, usually uh, in, in our case, uh, is performed on a specific form. And this form, we indicate uh, personal data, diagnostic exemption code, the aid, um, the device identified with, with corresponding codes, the therapeutic and the rehabilitative meaning, expected ways and times of using the communicator, provision of renewal in the prescription, and the indication of infungibility. The next step is provision of the, of the device, of the aid. Uh, it's very important that delivery take place within one month of receipt of the prescription. And uh, this time frame is necessary because of the fast progression of the disease, of course. Longer time frames could make the prescribed device unsuitable, can cause discomfort for the person, for the person suffering from ALS and wasting healthcare resources. We also recommend um, to opt for the rental service formula and not the purchase, thus guaranteeing the corresponding technological evolution for our patients. The last phase of uh, our pathway is monitoring the use of the device. We recommend that a six monthly evaluation, even remotely if you want, uh, is carried out. Uh, this action is important because uh, it makes it possible to identify any difficulties in the use of the previously delivered device and to initiate intervention adaptation and implementation, eventual implementation. Uh, in the event of a device no longer being used by patients, so for example, for the onset of the locked in syndrome, its withdrawal is provided for. For, uh, the, uh, for, monitor, for monitoring the use of the device, we use the Quest, uh, Quebec User Evaluation of Satisfaction with Assistive Technology. It's a form, a specific form, and we had an interview on the times, reasons, and any difficulties encountered by the patients in using the AAC. This is the Quest. Uh, is assessment of user satisfaction with the device. It is, uh, at the end of the questionnaire, we have a, a score uh, that is important to understand if the, our patient is uh, satisfied with this specific device. In conclusion, the ISLA model for evaluation and supply of AEAC devices aims to guarantee all ALS patients equal access to communication systems, to reduce the time to attend the communication systems, and to create a, a um, path to avoid the waste of health economic resources, also providing the recycling devices. We believe that the ISLA model can be applied on, can be applied on, on the large scale, and uh, this is a good way for our patients, for their, their right to uh, communicate with other people in their life. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. I did love how you started with the rights of the person living with uh, ALS to, to start out the presentation. That was excellent.
Um, are there any questions from the audience? Or online? There is one on online. While they come up to the mic, I am going to ask, when, the per when you do that first initial assessment form, is it different multidisciplinary people doing it? Like is the speech therapist doing the speech pe piece and occupational therapist doing hand function? Or who's doing that, act that initial intake? So we evaluate everything. <laughs> And the evaluation is a, a, a complete evaluation um, with multidisciplinary people because this is very important to us to have many people from different disciplines that can can be a part of the of the process. So we have a doctor, a medical doctor, we are neurologist, we have a, a, a physiotherapist. A, occupational therapists, so we have always a multidisciplinary um, approach to these patients uh, all, all the evaluation of the needs of the patients. And this is very important because uh, the patient needs to be assessed in all his uh, need. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And the question? There's actually two in the virtual room. Okay. First, according to many AAC papers, and people with ALS and caregivers with ALS should learn AAC as early as possible to avoid the obstacle when learning the new device experience. What do you think is the right time for people with ALS to apply for the assessment to engage with AAC and other devices? So, so uh, this is an important, important, important question. Uh, so, uh, I think that uh, um, the moment, the right moment to uh, apply the assessment to engage with AC uh, is, uh, should be evaluated, uh, we, we in Italy, we, can, we, we think it is for case. Uh, I think that um, our, uh, our, our, the, the, the correct moment should be chosen on the basis of the situation, the clinical situation of the patients. Uh, we believe that uh, some patients need an, a, a very heavy approach because some, sometimes some patients have a psychological situation, some patients have a, a familial situation that uh, uh, are complicated in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, managing the, 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 the all the problems, the clinical problems are linked to the disease. So uh, maybe we have to act very early. The ISLA um, should be a, a, a develop an approach very, 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 very early in the in the in the course of the disease. Sometimes we can wait. We can wait some more time. Uh, we can propose a different type of of. Um, of a device, and this device can be changed uh, all over the evolution of the disease, all over the evolution of the, of the ALS. So we decide uh, time for time <laughs> to uh, our, our kind of approach on the single patients. But it should be a personalized, personalized uh, evaluation yeah. about the, the type of device, about the moment to uh, propose the device. Yeah, that's excellent. And my, you answered my question about the, can you change the devices as well? Yeah. Yeah. So there's one yeah. other question online. There's actually multiple questions. Oh, but there's two multiple of them, questions online. Two of them relate to the same thing from Megan and Gujan. Um, they would like to know who pays for the devices. Who pays? For them? Sorry, I can hear you very well. Who, pay, who, pay, <laughs> <laughs> who pays for the devices? Excuse me? Who pays that's, for it? Because there's some problem I can understand. Payment. Because I can have you very well in this moment. Payment. Who pays? Can you repeat? Who pay? Who pay for the device? Yes. This is the question. Yes. Ah, okay, sure. Yes. Oh, who pays for the device? Device as in Italy as uh, are uh, selected from uh, and proposed from uh, Isla, but uh, we have a health system as national system provide to the um, device to the patients so 
patients, uh, pa patients don't pay the device. The device is uh, in charge of a health national system. Because we have a, these patients have a specific uh, uh, certification. This is a rare disease certification, a specific mm. certification. And uh, under this specific certification, the patients have the rights to be um, uh, followed up in the daily disease. And every device that is necessary and is uh, prescribed from the doctors uh, can be. Um, can be can be from can, can arrive from the the national health system mm -hmm. so the patients don't pay any more questions online one more no more no more any other questions in the audience so let's join me and thank you the professor that was excellent and you know, maybe somebody else can use a similar model in their own work so thank you yeah. so much. Thank you very much to you. Thank you. Bye.